Microsoft Word's Section Breaks feature is a powerful formatting tool that lets you divide a document into different sections so that each can have its own distinct layout and formatting settings. This video will be a detailed explanation of what section breaks are and how they work and why they're useful. So what exactly are section breaks? Section breaks have two key purposes. The first is for division of document. Section breaks allow you to partition your document into separate sections. Each section can have its own page layout settings independent of other sections. This means you can have different page orientations, margins, headers, footers, columns, or even numbering schemes within the same document. Section breaks also allow for independent formatting. Once a section break is inserted, any changes you make to formatting like header, footer, content, or column settings apply only to that specific section and not to the entire document. There are four types of section breaks. The next page section break, continuous section break, even page section break, and odd page section break. The function and usage for each of these differs. So let's talk about the next page section break. This inserts a section break and starts the new section on the next page, similar to a manual page break. It's ideal when you want to begin a new chapter or section with a fresh page layout. The continuous section break, on the other hand, inserts a section break without starting a new page. So this is useful when you want to change the formatting, like the number of columns within the same page. The even page section break inserts a section break and starts the new section on the next even numbered page. This is often used in printed documents where sections should start on the left hand page. An odd page section break is the opposite. It inserts a section break and starts the new section on the next odd numbered page. Common in books or formal reports where sections typically begin on the right hand page. After I make just a couple more points, I'll show you some examples and demonstrate the implementation of each of these types of breaks. Common uses and benefits. One of the most common uses of section breaks are for different headers and footers. You might want the header or footer to change from one section to another. For example, having a different chapter title for each chapter. Section breaks let you unlink headers and footers between sections. You just have to remember to disable the link to previous option if you want them to be different. Varied page layouts. If part of your documents need different page orientations, like portrait versus landscape, or different margin settings, section breaks allow each section to maintain its own settings. And then finally, custom columns or layouts. You can use continuous section breaks when you want to switch between a single column and multi-column layouts on the same page without forcing a page break. And finally, tips and considerations. Show your formatting marks. This will allow you to see where section breaks are located in your document. You'll want to enable the Show Hide feature from the Home tab. This will help you troubleshoot formatting issues. Being careful of deletions. Removing a section break can merge sections and inadvertently change the formatting of your document. So always check your layout after deleting or removing a section break. And finally, linking of the headers and footers. If your headers or footers seem to repeat unwanted content across sections, check whether the link to previous setting is enabled. Disabling this allows each section to have its own unique header footer. So let's look at some very common real world examples of the implementation of section breaks. Be sure to download the zip file from the link in the video description so you can have access to all of these samples. That way you can follow along with me or just open up the solution files and see how everything was done. So here's our first real world common example. Suppose you have a document where different pages within the document need different sized paper. So here I've got this two page document. Now we don't really need to read the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna zoom out on this. Now, since the default view for Word is to show us everything in a single column scrolling layout, I bought this widescreen monitor for a reason. I wanna use it. So I'm gonna go up to view and engage the multiple pages option. So now I can put these side by side. Well, here's the deal. In this document, I wanna have a single page that is this sporting events awards dinner invitation but I wanna have a second page included with it that's a custom sized piece of paper. So the first page needs to be eight and a half by 11, but the second page needs to be six inches by nine inches. That second page also needs to be in a landscape orientation. Well, as you know, if we go up to layout and change this orientation to landscape, then the entire document's going to be landscape, but I only want the second page to be landscape. If I go back to portrait, then the entire document is portrait. Plus, if I went up here to paper size 
and I change this to some kind of custom paper size, the entire document gets that paper size. So what I'm going to do is right here at the end of this line, this is where I want my page break to occur. I'm gonna go up to layout and under breaks, I could invoke just a normal page break, but this doesn't give me any real benefit. I can't take page two and change its orientation to landscape without affecting page one. So I'm gonna undo that manual page break. Instead, I'm gonna go up to break and I'm going to ask for a section break. And in this case, I want the section to start on the next page. So it looks like a normal page break. But watch what happens if my cursor is on page two and I change the orientation to landscape. Page two changes, but not page one. Also, while my cursor is on page two, I'm going to go up to size and change the paper size. And I'm gonna come down here and declare my own custom paper size. And I'm gonna have this be nine inches wide by six inches tall. Notice it says it's only going to apply this to this section. I'm also going to go up and give it a narrower set of margins. So the margins are different, the orientation's different, the paper size is different. Now here's a really cool trick that has nothing to do with section breaks, but if you don't know this trick, it's really nice. This first page, I want it to be centered vertically. In other words, up and down. Now we're all familiar that we can go to home and change the left-right orientation. But what about the up-down orientation? Well, in this case, let's go over to layout, and then we'll click this button right here that will take us into the deeper controls for page setup. On the layout tab, there's an option here for vertical alignment. Everything in Word by default is aligned at the top, but I'm going to change this to centered. Hit OK. And this is a lot better than adding a series of carriage returns at the very top of the document, essentially forcing this down the page. So next page section break, allows me to have a different orientation, different margins, different paper size, different vertical alignment. If you receive a document from someone who's using section breaks and you don't understand how they're achieving this effect, a way to display the section break controls visually is to go up to the home ribbon and then activate the show hide button. So this displays all of our formatting codes. Let's scroll into the bottom of this first section now it's difficult to see the section break control because the sentence goes almost all the way to the right margin. So I'm going to add a carriage return here just so I can force the issue of displaying the entire code. And we can see this is a next page section break. See, normally if you go to layout and say break page, I'll scroll back up, this would just give us a normal page break. But this is a next page section break. The previous example allowed us to have different margin settings for each section but those sections were on separate pages. What if you wanted different margins on the same page? So I have a regular document here where I'd like to have pretty much a one inch margin on the left and right for all of my paragraphs. But right here in the middle, I have this table. Well, if the table starts one inch in from the left, its width requirements run it outside of the right side margin. Now I could go up to layout and change the margins to a narrow margin, which fix the margins for the table, but it makes the margins for the paragraph portion much too narrow. Well, let's see how we can mix our margins on the same page. I'm gonna go ahead and set my margins back to normal. Now, something I did not show in the prior example, which could be very helpful, is to know exactly how many sections you have and which section you're in. There used to be a setting in Word that was on by default, but several years ago, Microsoft decided to turn this off, but you can turn it right back on. And that is if you come down here to the taskbar located at the bottom of the Word application, so here we see our page numbers and the number of words, if you right click, there are all sorts of other things you can activate on this taskbar. And one of those is the sections. So if I click in the paragraphs at the top of my document, I can see that I'm in section one. If I click somewhere in the table, I'm still in section one. And even if I click over here in the paragraphs after the table, I'm still in section one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click at the end of the text, which would essentially be the end of my first section. I'll go up to layout, breaks, and I'm going to insert a continuous section break. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but notice if I click in the paragraph text at the top, anything in this area is section one. But now if I click in the table, anything from this point forward is now section two. So everything from here to here is in a different section. Well, now I'm going to click below my table and split it again. So I'll go up to breaks and perform another continuous section break. It still doesn't look like anything happened, 
but everything here is section one. Anything within this table area is now section two. And then anything from this point down is now section three. Well, because these are separate sections, each section can have different margin settings. So I wanna leave the margin settings for the first section and the margin settings for the third section. I wanna leave those alone, but I'm going to click somewhere in the table and then go up to margins and set this for narrow. And so everything in the second section now has a different margin settings than the first or third sections. Now you can't have different paper sizes with a continuous section break and you can't have different orientations that would require some sort of weird T-shaped paper. But continuous section breaks are great when you want to have different margins. As before, if you want to see the section break formatting codes, just go up to home, click the show hide button. And if we zoom in, we can see that we have a continuous section break that starts here that separates section one from section two. And scrolling down, another continuous section break that separates section two from section three. Now let's look at an example of different page orientation. All of this paragraph style text here needs to be on page one, but I want my periodic table of elements to be on page two. Because my image is better suited for a landscape orientation, I'd like page two to be landscape, but page one be portrait. Notice no matter where I click in the document, in the lower left, I'm still in section one. So I'm going to click at the end of my text and just before my image, and I'm going to go up to layout, breaks, and insert a next page section break. So if I click somewhere on page one, this is section one. But if I click on page two, this is section two. Well, now on section two, I can go to orientation and make that landscape. And because it's a different section, I could give it a different set of margins. I could even take the image and I'll stretch it out. And if I wanted that image to be centered vertically, I could do like before, go to the deep dive for page setup, go to layout and change the vertical alignment to centered. And it will only apply to this section. If we go up to the home ribbon, turn on our show hide controls, we can see right here a next page section break. Here's an interesting use case. Suppose all of the black text on any of these pages needs to be in a single column layout, but all of the blue text needs to be in a two column layout. So we essentially need to insert a section break here and another section break here so we can take all of this that would be section two and give it a different number of columns layout. Now this is much easier than it sounds because if you just highlight the paragraphs that you need to be in the two column layout, We'll go up to Layout, Columns, and set it to a two-column layout. This will automatically invoke the section breaks both above and below the blue text section. If we go up to Home and turn on our Show Hide feature, we can actually see that there was a continuous section break applied at the end of this black text. Now it's a little harder to see, so let me add a carriage return here, but we can see there's also another continuous section break that was added at the end of the blue text area. Our last example is probably the strangest of them all because it requires the use of some imagination. The reason being is Microsoft is going to hide something from us. So here I have this 15 page document and maybe it's a book that I've written. And every time that I start a new chapter, I want that new chapter to start on the right hand side of the book. So when the person has the book open and they're reading it, all new chapters start on the right page. Now I'm going to zoom out so we can see all of these pages in one hit or at least most of them. So if I click on page one, we can see down here it's page one of 15 and it's one section. This whole document is one section. But if I click on the chapter two page, that starts on page four. If I were to print this document, chapter one would begin on the right side of the book. It would go to the left side of the book, right side of the book, but then chapter two would be on the left side of the book. So right side, left side, right side, left side. Well, I basically need to skip a page so that chapter two starts on page five and not on page four. Now, what most people would do would be to go to the end of the third page and just insert a second page break. So we've got right side, left side, right side, left side is blank, right side starts the next chapter. The problem with that is if I were to go in here and add some more text, because of that double page break, Chapter two is now on the left side of the book again. Let's turn on our show hides and we can see there are two page breaks. I'll have to be very mindful to come back in here and take one of those page breaks out. But again, if I do some editing and let's say we take out this paragraph, 
Now I've got to remember to go back in here and add another second page break to ensure that chapter two starts on an odd page. In other words, the right side of the book. Well, this is too much of a hassle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the normal page break that would separate chapters one and two, and I'm going to go up to layout, breaks, and insert an odd page section break. Now it doesn't look much different than a normal page break. It looks like it's on the fourth page, but let's watch our page numbers. All of this is section one. This begins section two. But if we look at the page numbers, it goes from pages one to two to three to five. There is no page four in this display. So it's a bit visually deceptive. Now let's see what happens if we were to take some text and add it to the first section. So now we have pages one, two, three, four, and this is still page five. So it skipped a page if that next section was going to fall on an even page, but it doesn't skip a page if the next section is going to fall on an odd page. So here's page five, six, seven. Chapter three is going to start on page eight, but that's going to be the left side of the book. So I'll go in and take out the normal page break and then perform another breaks odd page section break. So this was page seven, but now this is page nine. So let's scroll down a bit. We've got pages nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and chapter four is starting on page 14. Let's take out that normal page break from the prior chapter and insert another odd page section break. Now this is page 15. Page 16, page 17, page 18. Wrong side of the book again. Let's take out the normal page break, insert our odd page section break, and now it's page 19. And of course, if I did a little editing and maybe took out a paragraph, chapter four was on page 15, 16, but then chapter five starts on page 17 because that was normally going to be an odd page anyways. If we zoom in, you can see it tells us this is a section break that's utilizing an odd page section break. But let's say we had put that odd page by mistake and it was supposed to be an even page section break. Well, here's the unintended consequence that can happen. Notice I have this beautiful font and styling for the beginning of my next section. But if I go in here and I delete this section break, I lose all that fonting and styling. When you delete a section break, it's very likely that the two sections are then going to collide and one is going to override the formatting of the other. So let's hit undo. So here's how we can work around that problem. So I'll click at the beginning of the text that follows that section break and go up to breaks. And since I had added an odd, I'm going to follow that up with an even, but zoom out on this. So now we can see there's an odd page section break followed by an even page section break. I can now delete the odd page section break. So if deleting a section break unintentionally merges sections and changes their formatting, double the section breaks, the one you didn't want with the one you do want, this keeps that separation, and then remove the unwanted break. So those are five practical use case examples for the four types of section breaks. Next page section breaks for different orientations, different paper sizes, continuous section breaks for different margin settings within the same page, continuous section breaks for differing number of columns within the same page, and then odd and even section breaks to ensure that each section begins on either an odd page or an even page regardless of previous content. So let me know what you thought of these examples in the comments, and do you have any other weird use cases that you want to share with everybody? Don't forget to download the sample file with all of the starter files and the solution files. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.